good afternoon it gives me immense pressure to accept a very warm welcome to you all to the fourth technical section of the three day international virtual conference on gender studies i am trisha joshi and i will be your moderator for this section i welcome dr kiran kumar mithali is assistant professor at the department of english presidency university bangalore he has obtained a phd degree in english from central university of jharkhand ranji and an, and an ma from karnataka university darwad Dr. Kiran Kumar was awarded the research fellowship from UGC New Delhi for pursuing research from 2012 to 2016. He has taught English language communicating skills, business English and English literature for various courses and is having experience over 10 years of academics in various reputed institutes. He has presented several papers at national or international conferences and several articles of research by him are published in international journals. I also welcome all the participants to this section. The participants are Dr. Punam Rani Ma'am, Ramini Swarna Ma'am, Kushbu Sahu Ma'am, and Pursatam Jajak Sir. Here are a few guidelines that the participants should keep in mind. Paper presenters are requested to keep the time limit of 10 to 12 minutes for their paper presentation. And participants are requested to post their questions intended for the Q&A section in the chat box. Over to you, Kiran Sir. Sir? Kiran, sir? Right. Yes, sir. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Good afternoon, all. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Uh, it's my immense pleasure to be a part of this international conference. Uh, you know, BK College, uh, it's a BK College, Kotayam, Tamil Nadu, right? Yes, in collaboration with Cape Comoran Trust, Tamil Nadu, uh, International Conference on Gender Studies. So in this uh, particular technical session, we have four presenters. Uh, let me read, read uh, their names, four papers. The first, the order is, Yeah, Dr. Poonam Rani, Assistant Professor, Department of English, HVM, a PG College, Sri Dev Suman University, Uttarakhand, India. And uh, she will be presenting on treatment of social realism, racial politics in Pearl S. Bucks, The Good Earth. And the second presenter is uh, Ms. Ramani Swarna, Assistant Professor, Delhi University. and. Uh, uh, Madam's topic is a systematic literature review, new definition model for ecofeminism through post-COVID times. And the third presenter for technical session four is Kushbu Sahu, research scholar, social work department of Depa social work department institute, Guru Gasidash Vishwavidyalai, Bilaspur, Chhattisgarh. And her title is Educational Aspects and Social Status of Third Gender. And the fourth presenter is Purusottam Rajak, Junior Research Fellow, Sidhu Khano Birsa University, Purulia, West Bengal. And he would be you know, presenting a paper on trans transgressive desire in transgressive body, critiquing body politics in Firdus Kangas trying to grow. So this is a wonderful topic and all the papers and the titles appears to be very interesting. And the next one hour, we're gonna have a very interactive, insightful session because this is gender studies, it's very important. Studying gender, you know, it would provide a unique and a stimulating intellectual challenge, my dear friends. And more importantly, uh, it can be your first step in and enacting real changes that can improve the people lives so i would i would anticipate a good presentation ahead and we'll begin with the first presenter uh, dr punam rani from hvm pg college sri dev suman university uttarakhand so madam over thank to you. you thank you sir thank you so much Myself, Dr. Poonam Rani, an assistant professor, Department of English, 
Harsh Vidya Mandi PG College IC Haridwar. And uh, before my presentation, I would like to share my slides. So uh, give me a few moments. And uh, request to other participants, uh, please mute your audios. Uh, once the presenter completes, uh, you can ask your questions. Okay? Please mute your audios. Over to you. Thank you, sir. Uh, in few seconds, I'm sharing my slides. Extremely sorry for delay. My laptop is taking much of time. So if you require time, then uh, shall we ask? No, it's, it's over, sir. It's over. Yeah, you can present it's now. On the screen. OK, OK, uh, fine. OK, madam. Uh, is it visible on the screen? Hello? It's not is it. my slide is visible, visible on the screen? No, no, no. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry about that. Yes, sir. Now it's visible. So a few minutes, just a few minutes. Sorry for the interruption. OK. So just continue with the other participants. I will share after that one. OK. So now we'll ask uh, the next presenter is, uh, I request uh, Ms. Ramani Swarna, Assistant Professor, Delhi University. Are you, are you with us, madam? Ramis? Yes, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Am I uh, audible to everybody? Yes. Thank you, yeah. sir. First of all, I would like to uh, say good afternoon to Kiran, sir, who is the chairperson of uh, today's presentation. And thanks to the organizers for giving me the opportunity to present my uh, the same. Now I go ahead and I'm presenting uh, my uh, PowerPoint presentation, and that is exclusively on my the sensor so is my presentation visible to also yes yes we can see the slides yes. are visible yes. yeah yes sir just the title of my paper is systematic literature review new definition and model for eco uh, feminism uh, through the post covid times the flow of the paper is abstract keywords introduction purpose of the study research questions research methodology findings and conclusions, implications, and the future uh, scope of the study. Now, this is the abstract uh, that has been presented to the organizers, and it was, uh, thankfully, it was accepted also. And I'm going ahead and sharing the entire thing. The key words of my paper are uh, ecofeminism, systematic literature review, changes, social media, and the new model that I had developed for this paper exclusively. 
introduction is that I really wanted to find out what is the current status of the ecofeminism. Then I, uh, while scanning the major uh, of the databases like Web of Science and you can say Google Scholar, Microsoft uh, Research Center, I was able to find out the heat map for the publication citation results and that gave me the relevance for my study. And if you look, this is the heat map of the uh, studies that were taken up. And I saw that there are only 24 publications in the women uh, studies uh, with respect to my topic that I really wanted to showcase. Similarly, in social sciences, only 10 of them, 7 in political sciences, 5 in educational research, 19 in environmental studies, 3 in uh, language linguistic three in linguistics, three in literature, and three in the management, whereas it was only two in anthropological studies. So that gave me the relevance for this particular paper, number one. Then I selected only 64 papers that were relevant for my systematic literature review. These are the record uh, count that was found out in the Web of Science, number one, and the percentage of the studies that were taken care of. This is the citation uh, for those articles which were necessary for my study, basically, so that I can understand. And to come for the importance and the relevance of my study, I saw that from 2008 till uh, 2016, there were a lot of papers that were published in the area of ecofeminism from where I had to derive the various definitions and scan through the papers in order to understand uh, what kind of theoretical uh, theories were present for the ecofeminism, especially. Then I saw that in 20. 20 and 2021 there is a drip in the number of publications so this shows that you know uh, the relevance of my uh, research number one and a lot of scope is present for the ecofeminist or the learners of ecofeminism to go ahead and start publishing the papers uh, or do the research also for the present this one my this thing is basically to find out or uh, to conduct a systematic literature review on the current perspectives of the ecofeminism these are some of the research questions that were taken care of from my side in order to understand uh, you know where we are leading especially in the time of the post covid uh, era that's what i had taken care of. research methodology scanning of databases like google scholar web of science etc in order to retrieve the research papers journals and books and then i wanted to search out with using the keywords like leadership theory changeless spiritual text leadership ecofeminism then multidisciplinary uh, you know the uh, approach that i wanted to take it up and secondly i adopted the protocol which is necessary to conduct a systematic literature review and that was basically with what i call it as spar-4 slr which stands for scientific procedures and rational for the systematic literature reviews. There were two sets of reviews which were taken care of, primary as well as secondary ones, so that I can extract the data number one, number two to find out the gaps and the missing link. These are the two kinds of reviews that were taken care of, especially in the contemporary time where the publications were required. Theoretical reviews, thematic reviews, structural reviews, framework reviews, <clears throat> definitional reviews, model reviews, conceptual and bibliometric on one side. And on the other side, I had narrative review, systematic, historical, argumentative, integrated, scoping reviews, meta-narratives, Bayesian meta-analysis also. Since the findings, uh, you know, it was more of a multidisciplinary approach. So I had to literally find out uh, about the ecofeminism in the field of management, finance, commerce, philosophy, uh, English literature, economics, travel and tourism, management, hospitality studies, etc., which have been uh, done in a very meticulous manner. This is the, uh, I would say, the uh, uh, model that was taken care of. On the one side, I had ecofeminism. If I had to focus on the computer sciences, I saw that ecofeminism is related to technology and there are certain papers written with help of the practices also. Then ecofeminism 
with respect to the social media spiritual textbooks performing cultures and the role of the communities which have to take up the uh, values from all these areas and how they were performing and that was associated with the cultures part of it also implications and future scope i wanted to find out what are the managerial implications i saw that yes one can definitely go ahead uh you know inculcate human and professional values like uh you know i can say give you the example of benevolence sympathy compassion leadership values uh then taking the responsibility action oriented result so these were the things that i was able to understand through the spiritual and eco feministic values on one side then the theoretical things were being observed from the religious studies eco feministic studies management technology etc then we were able to see the practical implications of these values which were taken in the form of the training meditation camp especially for the covid patients also through the technological things like giving them the online uh, importance for yoga and for the meditative part etc also kind of a thing future scope it's not, this one was basically i would say more of a systematic literature review which means that i totally focused on the prior studies that were published in the academic area in future i have got the scope to go ahead with the qualitative research or with the quantitative research also i can do that so in the end i can say that yes we can um, you know give importance to the future generation with the things that we have got the practices the theories that were uh, taken care of through eco feministic studies number 1 number 2 integrated and synthesized new model for the uh, eco feminism has been showcased out here values of the eco feminism values and practices which we can adopt from the spiritual literature or the textbooks of bhagavad gita jainism buddhism etc importance to the innovativeness and designing of the new technological products along with the eco feministic values and the role of the immediate communities with eco feministic values and these were seen in the form of distribution of the covid meal taking care of the covid patients and uh, coming up with a uh, new uh, innovative uh, i would say strategies for starting up their own businesses also so in the end i would like to thank all my teachers the department that i come from from the delhi university which is philosophy department and uh, the special thanks to dr neeraj kashik sir from nit kurukshetra who always made me aware the importance of the research on one side and on the other hand the relevance of the spiritual practices and the other things that are there so these were the basic um, i would say eco feministic writings that were taken up Uh, i have just uh, mentioned out here the important ones however since it's a systematic literature review 64 papers research papers were selected apart from the books and the literature that was available that's the end of my presentation i thank all of you thank you uh, thank you very much uh, it is only literature review framework right that's right sir. it was the literature review only okay okay it's a very good uh, very systematically done uh, all the steps have been followed uh, but uh, i want you to throw a more light on your you know findings could you elaborate that once yes, again yes uh, sir uh, number 1 uh, you see uh, i selected around 64 papers after scanning through the google and web of science when i did uh, you know initially they were around uh, i would say uh, 2888 papers from different areas that were there however with the help of the exclusive criteria as well as the inclusive criteria i had to reduce with help of the uh, keywords that were shared out here and i reduced my papers to 64 which uh, focused exclusively uh, on the post covid number 1 number 2 from the interdisciplinary branches of knowledge that were there what could be the uh, findings that are, were taken care of first of the finding was that yes definitely we need to focus on the future generation 
and secondly sir i also uh, uh, found out that yes in the contemporary time where it is basically the post covid time you know focus was more on the eco feministic values like loving caring benevolence uh, being sympathetic over the others uh, you know not reacting in a very aggressive manner so you know uh, sympathy was there lot of caringness which is a uh, eco feministic value that we see and since it's a eco feminist uh, feminism so we have to even go ahead and save our environment also so it was not just the uh, covid patients however i could see the shift was there even taking care of the animals so you know there was the shift uh, which i could find out for the millennials uh, where they are adopting the street dogs or the street animals feeding them early in the morning or in the evening uh, even for the plants also there were lot of plants that were uh, grown in the house so that they can get the fresh air and everything rather than just going ahead taking care of them sir so. so i could found out that yes there is this uh, combination of feminism eco feminism and even in the introduction with the technology or you can say the uh, community that is the main thing number one and if we see that uh, one of the initiative taken by the females women no matter whether they are educated uh, or irrespective of their age you can say or you can say even the background that they are coming in the plus point is that they were able to come up with uh, natural setups i would say like for cooking at their own home and uh, you know uh, distributing the food to the covid patients absolutely free number one and to others also in the society who never wanted to cook at their place so you know these kind of a things are very much seen in our community sir and that's why yes. i said that that the new model of eco feminism which is being observed in the society so this yeah. is the model that i wanted to focus more and more sir it's very good the framework that's what i said it is very apt and it is very you know systematically done Thank um, you, sir. so i hope uh, you would present this paper next time when you work on this area and it would add you know uh, say a new knowledge uh, to the uh, you know academics yes yeah. yes thank you sir thank so you, sir. i i um, that's what my concern is uh, please uh, uh, look at your theoretical position in the paper uh, which theories you are going to use and how you are going to use the theories to substantiate your main argument so pay attention to that aspect otherwise it appear to be a very good you know framework thank yes, you very sir. much thank Ramdi you sir Sonda. thank you sir yeah the next presentation uh, uh, madam uh, punam choudhury ma'am yes, are you ready now yes i'm yes. i'm waiting i'm waiting sir for yes me, yes sir. please please so should i okay. yes thank over you, to sir. you over to you dr punam choudhury First of all, thank you so much for the cooperation, sir. Okay. So is it uh, visible on the screen? Yes. Computer interface and it is a yeah seminar presentation. That file is visible. File is visible, sir. Yes. Okay. Not, thank you. Not, not, thank not, you. not your slides. On that file, I can see. Ah, uh, you mean this slides are not visible still? No, I think it is getting uploaded. 
let's wait another oh. 10, 10, 20 seconds. Okay. You click on that seminar presentation file. So here it is showing that my slides are presenting. No, Chris. What? How about others? Can you see uh, Dr. Poonam's slides? No, others? no, it's not visible. Yeah, that's it. Okay, Peter means. Uh, so shall we go for next presentation, ma'am? You fix. You can fix your so problem. Kindly, so, so kindly wait. So kindly wait. Just two minutes. If not possible, then I will start without my slides. Yeah, please. We are running out of time. It's already three. How about the moderator? We have time till three thirty, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. No issue, sir. I'm beginning with without my slides. Yeah, and, please. Uh, I will skip. Okay. Yeah, please. Uh, sure. Focus on your major arguments, ma'am. Okay, sure. Yeah. Uh, extremely sorry for the interruption and for waiting me for too much time. My paper is on treatment of social realism and racial politics in Pearl S. Works, The Good Earth. First of all, uh, coming to the main point, life in, of Pearl S. Works, Buck was born on 26, 1892 in Hillsboro, West Virginia, but spent much of her childhood in China with her parents. Who did Virginia work there? After college in America, Buck married and moved to China, and her husband lived in Tsu, Hanoi Province, a small town in on the Rihue River. Her work generally uh, being considered skillful in its portrayal and interpretation of Oriental life. The Good Earth highlights the life of Chinese peasants, a life that Buck had been prior to growing up in Chicken. After receiving the Pulitzer Prize, Buck moved back to United States permanently. The evidence of her sincere writings is that she received Pulitzer Prize for her work, The Good Earth, in 1931. In addition to the Pulitzer Prize, she also received Nobel Prize for Literature in 1938. When we talk about the writings and presentation of Pearl S. Buck, she presents the societies of different nations in her fiction and wrote about human freedom, race, education, family, etc. With her penetrating insight and exceptional analytical power, she has explored different shades of different countries and has been deeply involved in all that happens in the world, ways to understand, to know, and above all, to explain through her writings. Through the characters of Olen, the main protagonist of the novel, The Good Earth, but emphasizes the crucial economic contributions of women to their families. The main and the primary function of literature has always been the depiction of traditions, customs, feelings, and social positions of the people of a particular society. The true and genuine nature of human beings, beings comes to light only when they interact in different circumstances with different people. But through this paper, we analyze the treatment of social realism and racial politics in Pearl S. Burke's The Good Earth where she occupies a distinctive place in the history of British fiction and focuses attention on the socio-political problems of his time and makes the novel an instrument for social and political change and maintains a realistic attitude in her novels. Consequently, as a novelist, she does not make excursion into the realm of fantasy and romance, but deals with the actual facts and conditions of contemporary socio-political life. When we begin the story, the novel, The Good Earth, we find the people talking about as brown as the soil and they said they are like figures made of earth. It means to say there is a lot of discrimination due to race, due to gender, due to category and due to color complexion also. Just like the novel of Toni Morrison's as the same discrimination we find in Toni Morrison who is an African novelist in The Bluest Eyes, in The God Help the Child, in Villa Vid, the same thing is spotted in, the, in the, that novel, The Good Earth also. 
when we talk about the novel she does and has done there is a clear message for mankind and it is there in every speech she has delivered in every letter and book she has written the story of the novel is in the form of a biography and told is told chronologically from the hero's young manhood to his old age covering a period of long 40 years the title of the novel covers the main theme of the good art in itself the main protagonist of the novel who lang climb from poverty to riches from toiling peasant to wealthy landowner many other things like the status of women religion good fortune morality and necessity etc also tend to explore in the novel when we talk about the life china's peasant always face a hard precious existence the floods have reduced them to object misery barren thing is no more than a vintage a four peg sketch of a farmer named liu who has lost everything he owns and sits in the door of his own room house waiting to die when loon's identity and motives are shaped about all his relationship to the land he has grown up in an isolated illiterate community where patriarchal pity is at the core value and survival depends on an endless round of crushing physical labor the novel's most powerful episode tells the story of killing a famine that slowly enhances the entire countryside and side reducing bengalongs and his neighbors to poverty and near starvation when their food is exhausted the people begin to eat fruits of land and their precious supply of seeds then a kind of clay called goddess of mercy earth which provides the flavor of food but there was no nourishment when we consider and thinks about the condition of the farmers throughout the 1930s millions of farm families were pushed off their homelands victims of economic collapse and most intensive types of farming within the traditional production from work because of the shortage of cultivated land as reflected in the relatively high yield per hectare but low yield per ben he took his life from his earth drop by drop by his sweat he drank food from it and from the food silver parles bak being an american novelist literature translator and what not as a daughter of a missionaries and spent almost 40 years in china and interpreted china for the western world through her works as her works had generally been considered skillful in its portrayal and interpretation of oriental life and she was always famous as the champion of the humanitarian causes but often allowed to detect it quality over right artistic and what not but when we talk about the condition of the women when we talk about the uh, site of the discrimination during this period the family was very important however not everyone in the family considered equal glimpses of discrimination was very clear as males were more important than females the only way a female could raise her status was only by producing sons they have no their own identity they have no their own right they have no rights and were considered the property of their fathers brothers and husbands if a wife fails to satisfy her husband desires she is simply thrown out of her house through the novel it puts the questions the simple equation between simplicity and village life cleanliness and urban life the novel debunks the idea of associating virtues and vices and rural working classes and upper classes of society respectively and it took an important step simply by portraying the oppression of women in chinese society however telling the story from a men's point of view prevents the novel from wenglong's perceives or from suggesting ways in offering any glimpse into how the female characters might have far richer lives then women might take power over their own lives the traditional chinese civilization and the transformation of that civilization in recent times partly in response to contact with the modern western world in, is clearly shown through the novel a change in the position of women may also have been associated with the urbanization of culture women always have been the subservient tend to men but the con- concentration of the upper classes in cities where the work of women is less essential than of on the farm may have contributed to a future decline in the status of women over the next few centuries 
furthermore because of the female characters have always lived in a society that devalues them they entirely subscribe to its rules for them a state of mind called internalized misogyny through the character or the main protagonist of the novel or len the novel shows how when even when women perfectly plays the role of a silent obedient wife it still does them little good there is a political turmoil in china after the famine and rowdy peasant storm the palace and loot the place the troops are sent and anybody with palace belonging on them are executed without questions she is the first to suggest that mong lang sell the daughter even though she herself was sold in a similar situation when her parents badly needed money she expresses her agony by saying she expresses her agony in the following words by saying every man i hate except you i have hated every man even my father who sold me i have heard only evil of them and i hate them all i am filled with loathing and i hate them all i hate all young men the particular quotation shows the agony the suffering the turmoil inside the female and uh, there was a short film that i inserted in my slide but extremely sorry that i could not play that but through that movie when we clarify the scene of that movie it also shows the clear portrayal an extremely patriarchal society in which men hold almost complete power over women the male characters see women within a dichotomy meaning at that there are only two option for their perception of women as silent obedient honorable women or as worse they are not valuable they have no own identity and very little wing room exists between these roles in either cases men consider women to be essentially by their slaves either as their unfailingly willing helpers or as providers of sexual certification furthermore as often happens in patriarchal societies or lens of your appearance counts far for far more with bang long than her intelligence or abilities do ultimately uh, dr konam uh, dr yes, konam i i request you uh, could you could you con conclude your yes, presentation yes, of course i'm i'm, I'm concluding yes yes yeah. so through the through the novel through the play and through the story it is quite clear that in our civilization in our the 21st century era women are not still free they are always in the clutches of male ones thank you so much and extremely sorry sir for the disturbance that it's is okay see technical glitch is you know inevitable <laughs> when we when we yes, have a very, very you know, virtual sessions yes it's okay, okay. Uh, the topic uh, you selected is uh, a very good topic and it is it is unfortunate you know uh, the social realism started in uh, you know it was against to romanticism right so romanticism started in 19 19 19th century but still you know we experience uh, you know how don't downtrodden uh, people are treated in the society especially in the third world countries and developing countries so it, this yeah this uh, text you have chosen and you try to analyze it and you try to give voice to all these you know marginalized characters in the text which is very important uh, being an academician and literary you know uh, you know teachers researchers you know we have to you know do this noble cause then only this voiceless people uh, get you know recognition so in right. literature when it comes to literature literature has played a pivotal role in giving you know voice to all these you know marginalized people uh, when you read the uh, historical narratives and uh, history books and you would not perhaps you would not get the accurate you know details or their agonies their hard times but whereas literature it 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 lays the groundwork for contemporary tragedy and it it is it, this social realism it will be an experiment with you know social works and it it is right. you know determined to discover 
and and the hypocrisy and manipulation manipulation of all these you know upper class people so in that context the research as it has already uh, lavishly explored by many researchers but still uh, if you come across any text you can explore and give you know voice to all these you know people uh, thank you very much uh, we'll go to next presentation uh, i request uh, thank you sir thank you. thank you thank you i request the next presenter uh, presenter is uh, sorry this is uh, khushbu sahu research scholar social work department guru gasidas vishwavidyalay bilaspur chatisgarh uh, yes sir I am audible. Yes, yes, you are audible, Ms. Kushbu. Uh, Good afternoon. You... Yes, sir. Yeah, you have exactly ten minutes. Please yes. wind up your presentation within ten minutes. Okay, sir. Uh, Good afternoon to everyone. It's my immense pleasure to present my presentation here. Uh, I am Kushbu Sau, research scholar from Gurugasida Central University, Bilaspur, Social Work Department, and I have some technical issues, sir, so I am not able to present my uh, present uh, slides. So I will go through the words. Uh, my topic is educational aspects and social status of third gender, in which uh, there are uh, the table of contents are abstract introduction, rights specified in constitution for each gender, status of third gender. Uh, education inequality in third gender education challenges of third gender objectives literature review research methodology suggestion and conclusion references and i'm thankful that uh, my abstract is uh, selected and submitted there and my key uh, keywords of my abstracts are third gender discrimination disadvantages group education and employment uh, moving to the next slide introduction in our country uh, each and every person has equal right to provide provide for the sur uh, survival uh, but only male and female gender are getting the right not the third gender means transgender because the third third gender have different different from uh, this community third gender is an umbrella term used to incorporate people of various gender identification including transsexual drag queen and dra drag king masculine woman feminine uh, male traditionally gender classification is based on sex the person can be male or female while the transgender or third gender is umbrella term used for the who are not con considered as male and female uh, the uh, the transgender uh, this transgender is explained as male to female female to male intersex cross dresser transsexual and uh, the th third gender all are always abused by society in mentally physically emotionally psychologically man manner in india the, there are unique wide selection of transgender connected identities which has the name of hijras aravani sotis joktas shiv shaktis etc Uh, in the past in the past they were treated with the great respect but now they their conditions are too poor uh, uh, moving to the next slide uh, right specified in constitution for each gender is right to equality non discrimination equality in opportunities uh, abolition of untouchability freedoms of speech uh, protection of life uh, free and compulsory education right against exploitation the status of third gender education educational status of third gender are totally poor they are not getting their education uh, in a, in any level is uh, that is primary secondary or uh, higher education third gender may be may be the new sex in indian constitution this is this new sex emerge with significant population they are empty social and cultural participation and therefore they need restricted to access education healthcare and public places that additional deprive them of the constitutional guarantees guarantee of equal equality before law and equal protection of law and instructional status no formal education uh, for transgender is widespread in indian context uh, some indian states are working to improve their lives of third transgender people states has been the sole state that has been success pioneer transgender inclusion by introducing the transgender uh transgender uh, welfare policies the chatisgarh uh, state is also 
uh, Chhattisgarh uh, government is additionally created efforts by to empower the transgender community by drafting associate actions set up for the welfare of around 300 3000 hijabs within the state uh, social status of third gender the third gender community has fewer possibilities than other because of stigma and discrimination they are hardly educated as they are not accepted by the societies and thus don't receive correct schooling even though they are re registered in an academic institution they face harassment and so many discrimination and they are uh, caught daily and are asked to go away uh, the university or they drop out their own it is a result of that they take up vagary or and sex work they are forced to force into sex work which puts them at uh, at the highest uh, risk of uh, acquiring hiv and uh, so many sexual um, diseases also uh moving to the next slide inequality of third, inequality in third gender education inequality in school uh, those who identify themselves uh, as transgender at any early age may have difficulties when their identity str struggle with judgment from educational uh, traditional uh, may uh, school protocol whether uh, public or private Uh, transgender women in india are being deprived of education and job due to persistent discrimination in spite of progressive law in the country and uh, census data also reveals that this community has low literacy levels just 46% transgender are literate compared to 74% literacy in the general population this community comes below the class disadvantages uh, disadvantage cluster outlined by the correct to education act Indian categorical uh, 2014 a close analysis of various report and discussion with community and stakeholder recommended that transgender are most uneducated and under educated become reluctant and uh, continue schooling there are some challenges uh, uh, of transgender when they face their educational line first or first are uh, inclusion in school college and university uh, second is uses of uses of disrespectful name and pronouns third lack of access to appropriate restroom facilities for confidentiality and lack of idea personality my uh, my uh, main objective of this paper is to know the current educational status of third gender understand their problem faced by third gender in education and the social challenges still faced by the third gender for acceptance in mainstream of society Uh, there are some literature reviews uh, so many authors are also present uh, their paper in uh, as uh, uh, re uh, via shino asmi and dr p nagarajan their study title pain in the problem faced in educated uh, the third gender community and uh, research gap one of the serious serious gap in our education system is the absence of skilled based education opportunities especially at the secondary level in india as the ch children move to the higher classes the learning gap increases especially among weaker section disadvantages group which I, which either you result the higher uh, higher drop out or creation and unproductive work force with little skill to sustain in the job market by providing chance for mean preliminary based education at secondary and better secondary level this evidence gap within the education system no notably for the uh, development of this community research methodology there is a need for research on the experience of education outcomes and trans people and also there is a research left in education transgender and look into the possible outcomes to research, uh, to increase the reach of education in the entire trans community sources of data are totally based on secondary data and uh, research design research design is uh, in nature of exploratory research design suggestion uh, 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 kushbu uh, i have a question uh, if you conduct only exploratory research okay Uh, then how how you would understand the ground reality of you know transgender people i would suggest you to visit where you you know find transgenders in you know, communities and the localities and if you conduct interview with them that would add you know edge to your research 
simply exploratory research because you are not a research scholar of humanities and literature where you would apply a theory and analyze the text. Okay, uh, since you are a scholar in social work department and it is expected to visit and interview and understand their experiences, that, that gives you, you know, more weightage to your thesis and as well as your research paper if you intend to publish. This is my sure. one suggestion. Okay. Sure, sir. I will take care of that. Yeah, Thank you, you so much for your suggestion, sir. Please, you have to do this. Uh, I know amid you know pandemic, it is difficult. Once it is you know comes to normalcy, you can think of it. Then, then definitely you are giving you know voice to them. Even I consider them as the subalterns because uh, they are still at the very very uh, so-called modern society could not able to bring them in a mainstream society uh, in, in 21st century. So, so that your research is very relevant if you. Uh, if you do it in a, you know, uh, in a proper way. So could you tell yes. me what's the difference between transgender and uh, third gender? Is that a difference? Uh, yes, sir. There is a little difference between them and third gender community belongs all LGBT and transgender is basically a uh, who uh, just uh, means to, who are just change their uh, gender means uh, they are uh, they are men but uh, behaving like women. Okay. Now, through your presentation, what I could understand, you know, you have given, you know, much emphasis on improving the social status of, you know, a third gender, which government of India is doing it. Okay, they are trying the level best to do it, but we don't know what extent uh, we have succeeded in that. And I would ask you, uh, please, you look into this uh, sexual orientation to be protected. It's not only their social status and how their sexual orientation to be protected. And, you know, if you bring in these, you know, uh, key points in your research, uh, definitely it is going to be a wonderful research and you will contribute something new to the existing knowledge field. Sure, sir. Okay. Thank yes, you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Kushbu. We are running out of time. We hardly we have five minutes left and one presenter still you know he needs to present uh, thank you very much for your wonderful presentation and we want to see this as a research paper or a chapter or a thesis uh, do it yes sir thank you so much sir thanks for okay. thank, thanks to the speaker and organizer for giving me this opportunity thank you so much thank you and the last speaker for technical session four is uh, uh, this is uh, Purush, sorry, Purushottam Rajak. Mr. Pur, I think it's a he, Purushottam Rajak. Are you with us, Purushottam? Purushottam, are you with us today? Mr. Purushottam, I thank the moderator. So moderator Ms. Mina Sabu, moderator. Sir, he is not present here. He, yeah. he is not present here. He is Purushottam not present. is not okay. present here. No, no. So, uh, I think we have come to conclusion then. So yeah, 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 yes, yeah, sir. So the three, three papers. You know what? Is my opinion. All the three papers you presented. The first paper. Uh, it was on uh, systematic literature review. I would call it is still in a first phase of research because she has come up with her framework for proposed research. And it is very good, very, you know, professionally done. And uh, she has to come up with the research paper. Then we would know her findings very well. And the second paper, you know, treatment of social realism, which is, you know, always, you know, I explore these areas and it has been already lavishly explored in literature. If you, everybody, if you are from literature, everybody is, you know, familiar with the doll's house, right? And where <laughs> this text is, you know, uh, analyzed from different perspectives, social re realism and feministic perspective. Uh, so it has been lavishly, ex you know, explored, but the presenter has come up with a new text and tried to analyze it, which is very interesting. I liked it. 
and the third paper third presentation was very interesting and if if the scholar incorporates my suggestion if she conducts you know a interview and a field work that would give you know thorough understanding of third gender you know people and their experiences and reading through the text and you know understanding their you know uh, documented or archived testimonies would not give you sufficient evidence so if you if you want to come to karnataka you can come and visit saudati where devadasa system is still you know privilege and they still have a problem you can interview them you can understand the ground reality and there are so many social activist you have to interview them and you have to you know document their you know experiences you have to read autobiographies so then you can bring in novelty in your research so otherwise it is just you know a reading uh, you know the research papers which have already been published that would not give you much uh, what you say uh, a knowledge that will help you to find out the gaps but if you want to look at a particular dimension or a particular aspect you need to conduct a field study uh, because you are a research scholar in a social work department not in english literature so i i would like to extend my sincere you know, gratitude to organizing committee bk college kottayam kerala um, for giving me this opportunity and i would like to you know thank uh, cape comoran trust for you know giving me this wonderful opportunity to interact with you uh, thank you very much